Okay, so how's everybody doing? So I want to uh, just share with you uh, how I get my ballast. Like I'm a real stickler for track work, as you know. Um, I don't necessarily hand lay, although some is laid on River Road. Um, some of it was hand laid. But most of it's just Atlas uh, Code 70 uh, flex track. So uh, between painting the track and ballast, you can get a really, really nice dramatic look, like a real scale, uh, realistic look to your track, as you know. And I mean, you can just spray, spray bomb the track brown and then use uh, ballast and it looks really good. But um, I want to show you how I basically uh, sift ballast for River Road. So. This is actually limestone. You can get this limestone from any landscape place. Like you can just buy a bag of it or a bucket of it or whatever. Or you can probably find it, you know, if you look. Or any kind of gravel like this. But I find limestone has got a really nice tone color, a ballast color. But ballast varies, right? So I just take it and I make sure it's dry. And then I just put uh, this yogurt lid over top, the same size that fits these containers. Okay. And I basically just start shaking it and working it over and then I'll show you what it looks like. See that? Here, watch. So this is really nice HO and the finer is beautiful for end scale. Like you can see that, the, this is the heavier coarser, right? And then this is much finer for like end scale. So you, like it's all out there, right? And it looks better, I find, than the commercial ballast. And what I do is I just lay this in and then I just, you know, 50-50 isopropyl water, just soak it down, like not so it's flooded, but just so it's wet. So that when you eye drop in matte medium, like diluted 50-50 matte medium, it just soaks in nice and it'll dry and look just like this. Okay, and it looks fantastic, okay? So limestone. Right. And you get all different uh, sizes of granular and I really like it. And don't be afraid to try different types of dirt or mixing dirt in with it or whatever to change the color and or you can airbrush it after. OK. OK, so this is a, a particular phase that I've been waiting a while for. Um, you can see this three way turnout. Um, in this section here, like in this photo, this is the same sort of area, but this is just a, a standard uh, two-way turnout, obviously, but this is a three-way because that's the nature of shelf layouts. You never have enough room to, uh, to cross over or to create uh, even close to prototype length um, industries or spurs or whatever. So if you're wrestling with a smaller footprint like in terms of linear feet like in my case I have about 26 feet I have a little bit more of this for another discussion but so when wherever you can use curved turnouts because curved turnouts save space if uh, you don't know how they save space it's because you don't have to run tangent and then make a tight curve to go down the other way you start your turn earlier and you end up saving space when you combine curved turnouts and even when they're larger too that and they look more prototypical and of course three ways are not prototypical on this particular railroad but they are on river road and this saves a lot of space because now i can serve ipex plastics with this one i can stuff empty cars down this one just like the prototype has two uh, trackages this one goes down to the very end to another small building supply industry this crosses over, goes over to section three, which will ultimately lead to the Milner Grain Elevator Ops and then the uh, stub end staging beyond that. So what I'm going to do here is just use this ballast that I sifted and made from limestone, okay? Um, and what I'm going to do is just uh, lay it in first. And I'm going to spend a bit of time spreading it out first. And I generally like to use my finger. Um, I find a finger works the best. And then I'm going to use the brush to just clean up um, 
certain areas and then I'm going to wet it down and I'm going to use diluted matte medium and people have asked about this before and the reason why I use this is because if you use carpenter's glue or wood glue or Elmer's glue you will almost most likely glue the points together and you'll have a real nightmare on your hands but if you dilute this down to let's say like 20 percent matte medium with 80 percent water when the points stick and if they do they're really easy to pop like they just like you just work them over and it pops and you can pick out any bits of ballast and the ballast isn't coming off it's not going to move and if you ever want to move it you just pour isopropyl alcohol like like straight 50 percent to 99 just soak it down it'll loosen the matte medium like it'll liquefy it and you can actually move and shift the whole track and the turnout when it's been soaked in isopropyl because it's now soft pin it back down leave it overnight and it hardens back up again completely flat so that's why I use this method and with this particular ballast you can go with just the stock color if you want or you can put a wash on it like an oil or acrylic wash thinned with uh, water and or you know um, odorless mineral spirits if you use oil and you can change the color of it okay so I spend the time working the ballast and getting it all cleaned up getting it all nicely laid down and you can see that there's a little bit of um, finer shake with this ballast which helps it settle in really nice and it also helps to change up a little bit too because that's the way railroads are and if we compress our linear length to the railroad it's going to be varied looks of ballast on different parts of the railroad okay You know, I just want to say that uh, this turnout, like all these turnouts I, I scratch built on uh, paper templates from uh, Fast Tracks, I mentioned that before, they're excellent. Like they're, they set the standard for uh, jigged up or scratch built turnouts like that. Those guys over there, they really nailed it. And uh, their turnouts, I've built them for, oh, I don't know if they're still called Fast Tracks. I think they changed the name, but um, anyway, they're, you can get their jigs and their, uh, like I don't have any of their jigs because I just didn't have it in the budget for this. I mean, I understand why people do when they do a big layout for sure, but I just built them right over top of uh, paper templates and I've shown how to do that on my turnout um, tutorials way back under videos or under the playlist. If you can just scoot or, like, scout around and find them and I, and I show how to build, actually I covered this whole three-way, how I built it. And you know what? Uh, I got lucky with it. It turned out perfect. This is my best turnout on the whole layout. I mean, they all work really great. Uh, I think I had one uh, PC board pop, but then I fixed it no problem because uh, they have brass pins in them, so you can actually actually CA them and they 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 hold like if they pop and you don't want to clean the paint off and redo them. But um, no, they're excellent. But, but but this turnout here, like I ran through it with my capacitor uh, locomotives, the ones with the current keepers. And it just like like glass, just beautiful, man. Um, and uh, I don't even have uh, switch machines on them yet, and I can throw them like this manually, and they hold their own with just the throw bar pressure up against the closure rails. Like I kind of cheated these a bit too. Like if I, oh, you can't see there. Sorry. Uh, let me just back up just a tad right here for a second. Um, sorry about that. Uh, see right here. Um, let me just clean this out for a sec. So I actually filed into the, like I cut into the closure rail there, okay? So that the point is a little bit bent inward so it, it closes up really tight, nice. And I did that with both. Uh, so the points merge beautifully with the closure rail and it just, it's, it's flawless through here. So, um, you know, quite pleased about that, you know, so. Um, 
three ways are good if you use them, you know, in the right place. And uh, the nice thing about custom building your own turnouts is you can, you're not restricted. Like the problem with factory turnouts is not that they're good quality or can be or are some of them, is that when you design a layout, you're sort of stuck by what uh, turnouts you can get, right? But when you learn to scratch build them, like, of course, you're going to mess up the first few. I did, you know, I still do once in a while, but most people that build them can testify to that, that when you design a layout, like you don't worry about what turnouts are available. You just draw a plan up and you go, okay, I want to do this. I want to do that. You can lay out your paper templates at, at will and say, okay, I want to make this curve, la da da, right? Go in here. And then you can just build the turnout to fit the, uh, you know, the plan. And that's the beauty of it. And uh, you, know, you can build the points to look like they're scale, right? Like they're not just hinge, but you can hinge them too. But anyway, uh, this is where you need to spend the time uh, when you do your turnouts, right? And uh, let me also mention this in closing in this part. Like Lance Minham, I got to give him credit for this because, you know, it, it was right up the alley of what I was thinking. I just couldn't find a way to explain it. Uh, uh, don't allow the fear of boredom, boredom to uh, rule uh, you know, your model railroad. Like, what I mean by that is, like, build a railroad that you really are passionate about or whatever. And and don't get hung up on or in a hurry about running trains all the time. If you want to run and test them, fine. But if you're subject to, you know, fear of boredom, like you're going to get bored too easily, uh, you'll never finish the railroad. I don't care how big it is or how small it is. You'll never finish it. Like, don't you want to model a... a like whether it's freelance, fictitious, whatever, like don't you want to build your railroad? Like, like what's the rush? You're going to have loads of time to run your trains. If you're, especially if you build, like you plan the benchmark so you can take it down. Like, like the way River Road is, is, is if I ever have to move it, I'm going to be thanking myself because the way it's sectional and I can continue to build it and own it and enjoy it. So don't allow the fear of boredom. I'm bored with it now because you overran the thing and you just, you know, you're in a rush to to run trains or something. I, I don't, I mean, I think a lot of people go through that and that's understandable. But as you mature in this hobby, you got to get over that. Right? You got to, and if you want a nice railroad, you got to be willing for the long haul. And if you want to one day look back and say, hey man, I did it. And you want to get in a magazine or get some popularity or recognition from it, from your peers, you got to plug in, right? That's the way it works. So there's no easy acquired railroads these days. Even if you purchase one or get someone to design it for you, uh, you're going to have to do loads of work on it anyway. So, But the beauty of the shelf layout is you can have your railroad and eat your cake too sort of thing. Like you, you know, uh, if you understand that running trains differently than the big long vistas you know running through the mountains if that's what you're into uh, you can enjoy the hobby in every way you can touch every aspect of it electronics scenery locomotives dcc sound whatever uh, this layout's got years and years and years of things that i'm going to want to do on this i mean it just you don't need a big layout to have a fantastic layout okay Actually, I just forgot something I wanted to mention. Um, so you see this ballast. So this is limestone sifted, right? See the different qualities of it? Like here, look. Look at the soil content there. See that? And then see the heavier ballast here? So what happens is, is when you like shake it like this, right? Like when you sort of shift it around, all the, the larger chunks come to the top, see? 
So when you're pinching in your detailing, if you're grabbing your really heavy ballast there, like the, you know, the standard ballast. And then when you want to feather out like other areas, because that's the way ballast is, like when it runs down into the side and the ditches, etc., you pinch off some of this, right? And that's the beauty of doing it like that. See that? See? This is limestone. Make sure it's nice and dry when you sift it. And you'll probably never use another ballast again. And oh, I know the hobby shops are going to hate me for this one. But, but if there is anyone that supports a local hobby shop, it's me. And I've been doing it for like, I'd say 50 solid years, right? Since I was uh, 12. So, and I was there today and I bought static grass. So I do support the hobby shops. But if you want realistic ballast, sift some limestone the stuff's unreal and when you mix it when you wet it down and and use matte medium like 20 percent matte medium in the water it'll harden unbelievable and uh, if you ever want to soften it you just pour this on 99 percent or 55 you just soak it down like that it'll go all dark and then let it sit for like 10 seconds and you can actually lift the whole turnout and clean it up and save the turnout Okay. Okay, so time for applying the diluted matte medium to seal the ballast in. Okay, and I've gone over this nice with the brush and tweaked it up nice. Made sure the points are set in the middle here. See that? I don't have the the points, you know, made it up against the 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 uh, closure rail because I don't want to get matte medium. Well, matte medium is going to get in there, but it'll just make it uh, more difficult to to pop than when you want. But I'm not going to have any problems with that tomorrow. I know I've done all the turnouts this way, and I've had no zero problems. Right. So this is you can see how thin this. <coughs> excuse me. This is like 20%, 25% matte medium, 75% water. And you just spray the water in with one of these and it mixes on its own. It's fantastic, right? And I'm going to use this eyedropper to apply it. But first, <clears throat> I'm going to soak it down with this mister. Now, you can use spray bottles like this if you want for larger areas. But I do small sections at a time, you know, as I move along, as most of you know. And these little spritzers, when they work, are really awesome. Like they have a super fine, let me just put this up because I don't want to take that picture away there. Because uh, I want to show you how this matches the, the, the ballast. Like when it's wet, you'll see, but when it dries, it, it looks almost just like the photo. So, so I'm just going to see, miss that, see? Super fine mist. You can get these. I've seen them at hobby stores. You can get them at probably dollar stores too. But uh, you'll find out whether they work good. But I bought two. One doesn't work. And this one's awesome. So, Okay, so I just misted it down, right? That's it. Like You don't want to put too much water because then your matte medium floods everywhere. See the, the similarities there? In the, I haven't even painted this, right? And it looks natural. So I'm going to take this diluted matte medium with an eyedropper, which you can get at the pharmacy dirt cheap, like this. And I'm just going to just drip it in. You know, just, you know, there's one thing about this hobby that kind of bugs me. It's probably the, uh, like the mainstream culture. Like I don't mean the people, like I mean the consumeristic kind of, and no one person is to blame. It's just the nature of the beast of consumerism. You know, oh, you should get the latest, greatest thing or get this ballast machine. It'll make your, your work faster. And like, what's the rush? Like the same technique that I'm using here is the same technique that I used as a kid. I learned from a book 50 years ago. All right. But they got to change everything. Right. Oh, do this, do that. Well, stick with what works. I mean, you can use any adhesive you want, but. 
When this dries, I'm going to be able to re and re it if I want easily with isopropyl alcohol and it's going to be dead flat. And it's going to look awesome without paint. Okay, so here's the next morning, and let's have a look. Look at that. Look at those points. No effort at all, and they popped. And then what about this one here? Oh, look at that. They're not even stuck. But look at how hard the ballast is. See that? really nice right so the points are not glued see They're just like they were before move nice and easy move nice and easy and that turnout looks really good now i can touch up a few things wherever there's some loose spots if there was and i can add a little bit in here like just this area here just around there I'll do that separately just to fill in these little openings and then fill in some of this. Um, I didn't want to do that last night because I didn't want to get too much flooding in here. You don't want to get uh, glue under the throw bar, which is why um, I should mention this also. Uh, the reason why these PC boards are actually thinner than the actual styrene ties I used here in this case, or wood, or even the stock Atlas ones or turnout ones. But this PC board that these points are soldered to, there's a gap underneath it. It's a clearance, so it shifts back and forth nice. Okay, 